Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to finish turn a, um, a bowl of apple that I rough turned a while ago and then put in my homemade dishwasher kiln to dry. Um, it's very wanky. The bowl went super oval. It's very much a football shape. Um, it has a little bit of spalting and it was a little bit soft in a couple of places. One of the things that I'm learning is that you really have to make sure that your that your mark from the tail center when you rough it out is visible. I think that that would go a long way to helping get this thing lined up in the best possible orientation. Um, I could not quite see the the dimple from the tailstock. And um, I spent quite a, quite a little bit of time here trying to get the bowl centered as, as best I could. I used the 100 millimeter jaws when I roughed it. And I thought that I left enough, um, enough, enough wood that I would be able to true it back up and and still use the 100 millimeter jaws, but it did not turn out that way. Um, I ended up having to take the tenon down to fit inside my 50 millimeter jaws. So here I'm just readjusting it a, a little bit, and that did seem to help. It's still way wonky, but... You can see here how oval it is. That's my little gauge I made. One side has markings for the minimum and maximum radius for the 50, 100, and 130 millimeter jaws, and then the other side has the same thing uh, for when making a tenon. I've used it a couple of times. It seems to be, it seems to work out okay. I know a lot of people use a, a go or no go gauge, but this gives me a little bit of an option as far as a range, you know, if, if I am have something that I have to work around. It is so not round. I did a lot of scraping on this on this bowl, partially because I just I can't do a pull cut, so 
uh, coming from the the rim I'm sorry from the foot up to the rim in this direction is just not something that I have figured out how to do yet You can see I've got a lot of tear out there. But at this point, I'm not really worried about that. I'm just scraping, trying to get the bulk of the material out so that I can get it round and, and see where I'm at. At this point, I'm not even sure if I have enough wood left to get it round inside and out. I think this is this is maybe only the fifth or sixth bowl that I've turned, that I've twice turned, um, roughed green and then dried and then uh, finished turn so I'm I'm still learning all kinds of things so the first thing I did was just to get the outside flat I'm not really worried about the tool marks right now I just want to make sure that everything is round And here I need to see if I have enough wood to get the inside round. And I do, so I go back to, to the outside. And um, again, because I, I can't do a pull cut, um, I did a lot of shear scraping on the outside of this bowl, which actually gave me really a, a pretty good finish. getting lots of really nice thin angel hair curly Q shavings off of it. You can see how not round the inside is there. So I'm finally happy enough with the finish on the outside. I'm going to take the tail stunner out and start working on the inside. So at this point I decided that since I had enough thickness that I wanted to, to add just a little bit of a detail to the top rim of this bowl. It's a it's a pretty piece of wood. There's a little bit of spalting, um, and there's some interesting figure, but you know, apple's a little bit a little plain. And I thought that just a little bit of a kind of a bead here on the on the top rim might be kind of nice. And of course, then I have to go back and blend it in. I did put a coat of shellac on the bowl before I sanded it, just as a bit of a sanding sealer. 
I got a pretty good finish from the shear scraping, but the wood is just a little bit soft. And so I, I used the shellac to help stiffen it up a little bit. I got some funny scratches on this bowl after I got it all finished. Um, I think that this might be the first time that I've used this Bosch sander on a, on a piece. Um, it is a random orbit sander, so it shouldn't give me any issues as far as using it with the lathes turning. But um, next piece I do, I'm going to skip that and see if, um, I don't know, maybe there's a, something on the pad that's, you know, leaving marks someplace. I'm not really sure why I've got scratches in this bowl. And this is the tried and true uh, original wood finish again, because this is a solid bowl and, and could be used for, for food. And this finish is completely food safe. So basically you put on a very thin coat um, not enough to, to puddle, just enough to basically give you a color change from wet to dry. And then you let that sit for an hour, come back and um, buff off any of the excess finish that's left. And then you wait 24 hours, and I leave the tenon on so I can put it back on the lathe and buff it with, that's uh, 4 aught steel wool. Um, it's actually a pad meant to use on a, on a palm sander, but um, it is 4 aught steel wool. So now we're going to take the tenon off hopefully not go through the bottom. I kind of like bowls with a foot, so I've started leaving that little, a little shoulder there at the bottom of the bowl, so that gives me just a little bit of insurance against going through the bottom uh, when I'm taking the tenon off and, you know, ending up with a funnel instead of a bowl. And you always want to make your foot just a little bit concave so that it's going to sit on the outside edges um, and that there isn't like a hump in the middle which it would rock on. It just makes sure that the bowl will sit nice and flat. I put that little bit of detail in the bottom just because I could. Sanded it up, and uh, for the bottom, I just used some Howard's Feed and Wax finish. And she's all done. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and also a big welcome to my new subscribers. I really appreciate your support. Make sure you stop in next week. I've got an oak, burl, and resin project ready. It's going to be good, I can tell. Y'all be safe out there.